We were praying and sweating all over. It was really a powerful session. Lord, we pray you will make this marriage work out for your glory. In Jesus' name we prayed, George said, and I echoed a well and resounding Amen. Hmm, hmm, Sister Ruth, hope you are praying and committing our journey unto the Lord, George asked. Yes, Brother George. George was a vibrant Christian brother, the best I had ever met. When he prays, you will think as if the heaven wants to fall down right inside his prayer room, always with his Bible, always praying for fresh fire. George's fresh fire prayer points always goes thus. Fresh fire, my life needs you right now. Fresh fire, my ministry needs you right now. Fresh fire, my marriage needs you right now. Smiles. And indeed, George always vomit fire while praying. In short, let me say George was a man of prayer, and for that I love him so much, and that made my love for him to be at its peak. George can call for hours preaching to me over the phone and sharing some deep, deep revelations of God unto me, even though he knew me as a fire-branded sister too. In fact, I always foresee George becoming a great man of God. But all of a sudden things changed and turned out to be this way. George, that was full of fire while we were still in courtship, has become spiritually deaf and dead. Can you now see why the book of 1 Corinthians 10.12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall is right about believers that are not watchful of their ways. Hmm, hmm, God knows best. I muttered silently under my breath, Yes, I know best. I heard the voice spoke to me, George is assigned to be a great man of God, but the devil foresaw that and made his life miserable from birth. George might seem to be the happiest person on earth physically, but in the spiritual realm he's weak and out of strength. He might seem to the world as fire branded, but he's ever cold like a water kept inside the fridge in the spiritual realm. Don't you know the devil can make a life miserable even without the owner of the life being aware of it? Hmm. That's exactly the problem George is passing through right now. If you ain't in his life, he might never knew he's having a problem or in bondage of the enemy, unless if the grace of God found him. Hmm. Don't you know George still believes in his heart that he's still on the right track with me, whereas he has fallen a long time ago? Even though that wasn't his wish and desire, I was far lost in my thought and conversation with the divine before I remembered it's time for George and I to have our morning prayer and also continue our fasting and prayer program for the sixth day. I yawned helplessly and woke George up. George, I said, tapping him gently and carefully. He answered very weakly. Sorry, sweetie, I said, caressing his head. Thank you, my love, he said. But to be sincere is not easy, ooh, George said, still in his sleeping mood. I know George today is the sixth day, and we just have a day left for us to be totally freed and sing the song of victory unto the Lord. Hmm, but that one day seems to me like another seven days, George murmured silently. The Lord is our strength. Please stand up, I said. Let's have our morning prayer quickly, George, I said, trying to get hold of his hands. We both held our hands and prayed in a very silent way unto the Lord. Yes, when husband and wife pray in unison, there is always a quick answer to the prayers. The morning devotion lasted for not more than an hour. And guessed what? George was the one that anchored the morning devotion prayer. I should have anchored it, but I just felt a need to let George do it. You need to see the way he was praying. Chai, my sweetie, was so exhausted. When it was 9am, we started our prayer program for the sixth day. George was leaning his back on the wall and I was walking around singing and praising the Lord in worship. I praised the Lord with the whole of the strength left in me. After the praises, we read a portion of the Bible and switched straight to prayer session. George couldn't pray very well, for he was so tired and out of strength. Even though we were both holding hands, I held George's hand so tightly and called down the fire of the Lord into his bones. Fire of the Lord enveloped George's body from head to toes, I said, praying. I could feel the presence of the Lord filling everywhere already. I guessed George could also feel the presence too, for he kept saying, Jesus. 
and within a twinkle of an eye, my beloved George burst into tongues. It was like a rushing mighty wind. For he kept saying it without stopping for a second to catch his breath. I also joined George in praying in the Holy Ghost. I could hear George asking himself inwardly that, What is happening to me? I fastened my fist on his hands tightly and continued praying. George was unable to control himself any more, for he was carried away in the spirit realm. Suddenly, I heard George proclaiming healing and deliverance to himself. I'm delivered. I'm healed. I break loose from your coven, you demons and satanic bondage, holding my life in captivity from birth. I break loose from you every power of the enemy that put me into darkness and stopped me from fulfilling purpose and mandate. I'm free from every sickness. I'm free from every power that might want me to be the source of sorrow and problem to my marriage. As he was prophesying to himself, I never stopped praying. In no time again he switched to tongues, and this time I could perceive the fresh fire of God oozing out from George's mouth. Oh my God! I caught the fire immediately, and guess what? George and I both travel in the Spirit. I don't know what to liken the place George and I found ourselves to. The place was so dark and full of darkness. My dear Ruth, why are you looking so confused? Have you forgotten what the Scriptures told you in John 1? 5. I was silent at first, and just immediately I quoted the Scripture out loud and clear. John 1. 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not, I said. And indeed the light of the Lord shone so bright and clear in the place. George was just looking in a surprised manner. I guess he was wondering where he was at that moment. All of a sudden something caught the attention of George, and he shouted, My love, look at me over there. Over where? I said, looking around. Over there. He pointed his hands towards the direction, and lo and behold, George was there tied down completely. But his hands were free. I was praying silently in the spirit, and I said, Lord, why is George tied down this time again? I loosed his hands the other day while you were both praying. Have you forgotten? Yes. But why is he not freed completely? My dear Ruth, I wanted George to come and behold his real self in the cage where he's been tied down. I heard the inner voice spoke softly unto me. I was lost in my thought when I heard George said, But what am I doing here, Ruth? Hmm. George, this is where you are being controlled to go against your will. This is where you have been tied down from birth, I said, even though I don't know where such answers were coming from. George burst into tears and said, Ruth, please help me. I'm not the one to help you, George. God is the one to help you and set you free from this captivity, I said, and I know that's the main reason he brought you here. So let's call unto him now, I said. George stretched his hands towards me and I reciprocated immediately. George held my hands so tight and we began to pray. We prayed fervently unto the Lord, for neither George nor I was praying in our understanding. I burst into tongues and George caught the fire almost immediately. We were both vomiting fire. Yes, fire! And all of a sudden the chains that held George in captivity was broken into pieces. Hallelujah! A song dropped in my heart and I sang the song out for George to also join me. He did join me in the song. We both sang it passionately unto the Lord. Day six has been powerful. I have no doubt that we have won this battle. God has given us the victory. So I thought, but on the seventh day of my fasting program with George, I woke up very early in the morning and tapped George beside me. Sweetie, I said, tapping George, to let us have our daily devotion. My love, I'm not feeling too well, and I don't think I will be able to join you in the fasting today, he said very weakly. What's wrong with you? You slept healthy yesterday, so what happened over the night, I said after observing the look on his face. My love, I don't even know how I'm feeling right now, George said, feeling his temperature at his neck. I'm feeling very weak and tired, he concluded. Hmm, what will I do now? Lord, please have my mercy on George Ooh, I said, soliloquizing. Why will George be feeling very weak 
when we are about to complete the program today and finally sing a song of victory and finally rejoice over our foes and reproach, I muttered under my breath, My love, please, I don't want to die. That was the voice I heard that jilted me out of my thought. Jesus, die, KWA. I rebuke evil over your life, George. I said, snapping my finger over my head. George, you ain't dying now, and you ain't even dying in the next 50 or 70 years to come. I said with all confidence, My love. Hmm, George said, closing his eyes from time to time. George, please relax, you will be fine. I said, even though I was very scared at his reaction. I picked up my phone and placed a call across to the pastor. But unfortunately, he wasn't picking the call. Oh my goodness, what's this now? I said, trying to compose myself before George. George, please be strong, I'm coming. Let me go and call the pastor, I said. I took my cloth, put it on, and left for the pastor's place. I got to the pastor's place and told him about George's health and condition. Don't worry, Sister Ruth, Brother George is going to be fine, he said. Okay, sir, I believe. The pastor followed me down to our house, and when he entered the room, he began to speak in tongues. I caught the fire immediately and joined him. The pastor kept quiet for a while and said, Brother George, how are you feeling? What's wrong? Hmm, sir, I'm not feeling all right, sir. I'm feeling very weak, George said, breathing heavily. Okay, the pastor said and continued praying. The pastor was praying very fast and fervently. I joined the pastor in praying, but my mind wasn't at peace, so I thought of checking on George's temperature, though all my thought was that George was sleeping. But when I got to where he laid helplessly on the bed, I tried to lift George's hand, and guess what? His hand dropped back on the bed helplessly. I tried calling him in a silent way, but no, the love of my life wasn't answering me. How do you feel when you think you are victorious and something unexpected came up? Will you still be steadfast in the faith or you will break down and renounce God? Jesus! I'm finished. I called out to the pastor. Pastor, please come and help me to look at George. He is not talking or opening his eyes. Ooh, I said and burst into tears. Lord, this can't happen to George. No, this can't happen to the apple of your eyes. The scriptures said the number of our days shall be fulfilled, Lord. George is yet to fulfill his days here on earth, I said amidst tears. All will be fine, Sister Ruth, the pastor said, feeling sorry for me. Yes, all will be fine, sir, I responded. This is not my agreement with the Lord. So how will he die, I said, facing George on bed. I will never accept defeat from the devil, I said, wiping off my tears. Today is the final day. We were able to break chains yesterday, so George can't just give up just like that. I didn't know what to do. My inner witness wasn't saying anything at that moment. I switched to praises. I was singing and dancing unto the Lord in a very dramatic way. The pastor stood still and began to look at me. I was singing and prophesying into George's life. Someone is wondering why I decided to praise God instead of praying, chanting, or rather burst into tongues, right? Praises is one of the elements that pleasures God the most. Praises is one of the key into the presence of God. Why was David a man after God's heart? It's because he knows vividly the secret of God. He knows vividly what pleasures God the most. Have you seen anywhere it is recorded in the scriptures that David prayed for three HRs? David was a man of praises. One hour gone, I was still praising the Lord, but now in the spirit. All of a sudden, I saw a very thick smoke covering our bed where George laid down helplessly. The pastor also behold what was happening to George. Sister Ruth, the pastor called out, can you deduce what is happening to Brother George right now? Hmm, no, sir, I said. But I know he can't be dead, I said. George wasn't dead in the first place, the pastor said frantically. The Lord intentionally made him fell into a deep sleep, and he made it look as if he's dead to you. He actually wanted to proof your love for him. He wanted to see the way you will react to him if he takes away the only person you love the most after him. He wanted to know 
maybe you will renounce him for once. That was why your inner man wasn't saying anything at that moment. Sister Ruth, your faith has made George whole of his predicament, and now George is a realer man, he said smiling. Oh Jesus, I said silently in my heart, Ruth! I thought by taking George's breath for some minutes, which will lead to his divine healing and perfection of your fasting and prayer for the past few days. You will renounce me and call me a liar, but no. You proofed your faith worthy before me as a faithful and loyal servant. Hmm. I sighed heavily and said, Lord, have never for once doubted your majesty. When you asked George and I to embark on a spiritual journey, you didn't mention to me that he will be dead. We didn't have such agreement, I said silently in my heart. You can imagine. Smiles. The thick smoke was still covering George when the pastor was speaking to me. Thank God you didn't settle for less, and also thank God you never accepted what is not yours by believing it's the will of God for Brother George to be dead, he said. Suddenly the thick smoke covering George stopped, and he coughed out loud. I left the pastor and went to attend to my sweetie. How are you feeling? I said, looking at him and smiling. My love, what just happened to me? George said weakly. It's not easy to undergo spiritual surgery, ooh. My love, I will gist you about what happened later, I said. Do I even need to gist him about what happened? I thought within myself. Thank you, Jesus, the pastor said and headed towards George on the bed. The battle has been conquered. Now we are victorious. Hallelujah. The pastor prayed for both George and I to have a blissful and blessed beginning. Yes, it's a new and beautiful beginning indeed. Please continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, the pastor said and left. My love, I'm feeling sleepy, George said. Okay, sweetie, I replied, beaming with a smile. I couldn't give my eyes the beautiful sleep it deserves, not because of anything, but because I was just too excited. I stood up and began to dance unto the Lord. My love, ain't you sleeping? George asked in his sleeping mood. I guessed my song woke him up. I'm praising God, I said, still winding my waist around. George smiled and said, Can I join you, my love? If you can, sweetie, I replied softly. George and I both danced unto the Lord, for giving us total victory. After the whole of dancing and praising stuffs, George and I ended on the bed, and in no time we slept off. Very early the following morning, George woke me up to have our daily devotional prayer. Hmm, sweetie, I still want to sleep more, I said in my sleeping mood. My love, you will sleep later, George said. And I woke up immediately. We both had our morning prayer. And guess what? It was very glorious and powerful. George, the fire-branded man, is back. Smiles. We ended the prayer and I headed to the kitchen to prepare my sweetie's favorite dish. And also, I made a hot coffee for him to drink before having his meal. George, your meal is ready, I called out to him. I was still steering the coffee when I felt someone cuddle around my waist from the back. Hmm, thank you, Ruth, was what I heard from George. Thank you for thanking me, George. All thanks to God, I said, blushing. Please come and break your fast, I said, trying to make him sit down. George sat quietly and broke his fast. I also broke mine too. After some minutes, we both devour the inviting coconut rice I made for the both of us. Let me gist you small smiles. As we were eating, George couldn't take his eyes off me. What is it, George? I asked, looking straight into his eyes. Nothing ooh, George said and faced his food. Then why the look, I said, munching the rice in my mouth. Nothing, my love. Just finish up your meal first, he said, smiling. In no time we were done with the meal. George moved closer to me, planted a soft kiss on my lips for the very first time. Oh my gosh, I reciprocated immediately without wasting time. He carried me up and headed straight to the bedroom. Hope you know what happened next. Yes, exactly what you were thinking. Let me take off your dress, my love, George said, smiling over and over again. 
I allowed him to do whatsoever he wished, and boom! George finally made love to me for the very first time in my marriage. My joy knew no bound, for I was very happy and excited, and also no more hug and forehead kisses. The greatest help you can render to anyone in life is to bring them out of darkness unto a marvellous light. Smiles. Hmm, after all the lovemaking stuffs. Thank you for coming into my life, Ruth. You are indeed a god sent to me, George said almost in a whisper. I couldn't stop smiling. You are welcome, sweetie, was all I could manage to say. I never knew what I have been missing all this while, ooh, ha 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 ha. I don't know when I burst into laughter, missing what, ooh, brother George. George raised his eyebrows in a romantic way and said, Don't worry, my dear sister Ruth. Could you believe George added another extra one week to his personal leave before resuming to work? George spent the remaining days of the week at home and finally resumed work the following Monday. I also resumed back to work. Yes, I'm a working-class housewife and not a full housewife. I have my own business too. The reason why I left the business was because of the ups and downs I'm facing with George. And now that all things has been settled, I finally resumed back to my business. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. I started feeling feverish and sickly. Everything around the kitchen became nauseating to me. George noticed that and said, My love... Hope is not what I'm thinking. What are you thinking, George? Please free me. I'm not feeling too well, I retorted back. I will personally run a test on you, George said, and headed to his place of work. He kept calling me from time to time to ask about how I'm faring. The most surprising part of it was that George sent someone to bring lunch for me at home. I ate the food as if my whole life depended on it even though I was unable to eat the one I cooked myself. Around 5 p.m. in the evening, George came back. I was fast asleep on the couch. I was still sleeping when I felt something moving towards my lips. Blood of Jesus, I shouted. It's me, love, George said, and finally did exactly what he had wanted to do. Yes, he did kiss me. I was still trying to sit up, when I noticed he was trying to bring out something from his briefcase. What's that, George? I asked anxiously. I brought a pregnancy kit test home, my love, George said, and finally brought it out. What for? I asked, looking keenly at his face. My love, it's for you. Oh, this one you are sleeping around in my house. Let me know the exact thing that is doing you. Oh, he said, smiling. George pricked the tip of my finger and collected a little amount of blood. Ouch! I yelled out, Sorry, my love, he said. Is this how you will be doing? If I want to give you an injection, he said, laughing at me. Injection for what, Dr. George? Don't worry. Let me finish my investigation on you first, he said and did the necessary thing he needed to do with the blood. Few minutes later, How far, sweetie? What's the result of the test you did? Ooh! Hmm, my love, it's just malaria jaw. Malaria KWA, I asked, surprised. Yes, malaria that will bring about babies, George said, looking at me. Babies, not baby, I asked. Yes, my love, babies, don't you want to give birth to twins? Wow, sweetie, do you really mean I'm pregnant? Yes, my love, you are pregnant, he said and hugged me tightly, and I'm very sure it's going to be a double blessing for us. He said, while hugging me, I guess you know what George did next. If no, let me tell you. While hugging, George kept kissing me to the extent that I was trying to catch my breath. It's okay, George, I said, trying to free myself from his grip. No, my love, Eddie have been depriving you of this for a very long time. So I want to make it up to you, he said, still kissing me. Chee, sweetie, but not in a day, nah. I finally freed myself from George the lover boy. I know someone is asking why. Smiles, yes, I freed myself from him. Thank you, Jesus. My dream of becoming a mother is actually coming to reality, I said, feeling my tummy. I can't wait to be wearing maternity gown. Ooh, I said. George burst into laughter. Don't worry, my love. You will surely wear maternity gown when your stomach is protruding out, he said, trying to push out his tummy. 
George, are you making jest of me or what? I said, running after him. No, my love, I'm just feeling for you. Ooh, he said and stopped running. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks for not giving up on me in the years past, he said, trying to hide his tears. It's tears of joy, George, I said, and helped him to clean the tears that were already rolling down his cheeks. Thank you, my love, he said and hugged me. Gradually, gradually, I'm done with the first and second trimester of pregnancy, and now I'm at the last stage. Hmm, pregnancy is not easy. Ooh, God bless all the mothers around the globe. During my antenatal stuffs, George has been the one attending to me by himself. But on the day of my delivery, George refused to take my delivery. Though he has been telling me for long that he won't be the one to do that. And whenever I ask, why can't you? His reply has always been the same. For he will say, I can't, my love. I can't bear to see you crying and shouting. I entered into the labor room, bursting in tongues. Yes, tongues. Smiles. And within a twinkle of an eye, I delivered the first baby. I relaxed a little. Then in no time, the second baby came out. Are you surprised? Yes. I gave birth to twins. It's a double blessing for me and George. Congratulations, Ma. The doctor that was attending to me said, Chai, Madame, you are a real Christian. Ooh, you didn't even give us Wahala at all. But this, your heavenly language, is something else. Ooh, hope you will teach me, the doctor, said jokingly and left. George entered immediately and smiled at me. Congratulations to us, my love, he said. It's a baby boy and a girl, I cut in. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, George said and pecked my hands. The following day I was discharged from the hospital and on getting home, the pastor came visiting to congratulate us and brought out a letter from his pocket and handed it over to George. Congratulations for the newborn babies and congratulations on the letter too, the pastor said. Thank you, sir, George said even though he was wondering what could be inside the letter he was holding. Open the letter, Brother George, the pastor said. George looked at me, and I nodded my head in agreement that he should open it. Lo and behold, George opened the letter. And guess what? It's a letter of calling to ministry for George, from the headquarter of our church. Pastor, is this letter for me? He asked in a surprised manner. Yes, Brother George, the letter is for you. Be prepared for a full-time ministry, the pastor said. Thank you, sir, George and I echoed in unison. The pastor prayed for us and finally left. My love, full-time ministry, George asked and I replied, it's the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Lessons of the story. 1. Never give up on God, no matter the circumstances may be. There's always a brighter day ahead if you trust and believe in him. 2. Never give up on the person you love. The journey might seem rough and discouraging at first, but there will always be a reason to laugh at the end. If you enjoy this story, please support our channel by giving us a like and comment, share with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more video like this. Also, kindly follow us on Facebook. Stay positive and don't give up on your dreams. It will come to pass. Thank you for watching.